Hi everyone, welcome back to this channel and today we are going to discuss about public international law. So while discussing about public international law, we are going to start with the definition, the initial definition and how the definition evolved and why there was a need for a new definition and how the this definition is ever changing and dynamic and the reasons behind it. So with respect to the definition, the birth of international law can be traced back to ancient times. Jeremy Bentham has coined the word international law in 1780. So it was Jeremy Bentham who has coined the word international law and that is in 1780. And that means the body of rules which regulate the relations among the states. Now Black's Law Dictionary defined law as that which is laid down, ordained or established and the international law is which regulates the intercourse of nations, the law of nations. Now as per Oppenheim, international law is the body of rules which are legally binding on states in their intercourse with each other. So, Oppenheim definition is the main definition that we'll be looking into. And there is a lot of criticism in Oppenheim uh, definition that we'll discuss later. And that is the base of the newer uh, definitions or what was included with Oppen included along with the Oppenheim's uh, definition. Now, Lord Coleridge. Uh, Chief Justice defined that international law as the law of nations that is collection of usages which civilized states have agreed to observe in their dealings with one another. So uh, in earlier uh, days that is uh, initial stage the civilized states referred to the western countries and now uh, probably all states are considered civilized states. And then Oppenheim defines law of nations or international law is the name for the body of customary and conventional rules which are considered legally binding by civilized states in their intercourse with each other. There are some other definitions by J. L. Briley and Hackworth that says international law consists of a body of rules governing the relations between the states. So. In Queen vs. King, Lord Coleridge defines international law as the collection of usages which civilized nations agree to observe in their dealings with one another. However, the definition of international law by Stark is considered to be the appropriate for the simple reason that the definition is comprehensive and exhaustive as it reflects the present position of international law. So there comes the definition of J.G. Uh, J. Stark who defines uh, international law as international law as that body of law which is composed for the greater part of the principles and rules of conduct which states feel themselves bound to observe and therefore do commonly observe in their relation with each other and which also include one, that is the rule of law relating the functioning of the inter, uh, international institutions or organizations, their relations with each other and their relations with states and individuals. And further, there is a second uh, inclusion that is certain rules of law relating to the individuals and non-state entities so far as the rights or duties of such individuals and known state entities are the concern of the international community. So in Oppenheim's uh, definition, he considers only the interaction between the civilized states. So when it comes to J.J. Stark definition, that is the most appropriate in the present uh, day scenario. Here he included, uh, he's defined international law as that uh, it is a body of law which the major, major part of it is uh, of principles and rules of conduct. That is how the nations nations should behave with each other, the interaction with each other. And J. J. Stark has said that it is not legally binding, but the uh, nations considers them to be bound to observe it and therefore do commonly observe. So there is no international body that can actually uh, grant sanction or there is no international legislative body. So uh, the countries themselves... Uh, feel that they are bound to observe it. And here they have also included two other points. One is that it also includes the role, uh, rules or law that is uh, relating to the function of the international institutions. 
and their uh, interaction with other states or individuals and the second point is it also includes rules of law that is relating to individuals and non-state entities when it is kind of concerned with the international community. So, both, uh, both ways that is the functioning of the uh, international institutions and their interaction with the states, individuals etc. Meanwhile, the other way too that is uh, rules relating to some of the individuals and non-state entities when it comes to their uh, when their conduct or when their activity is uh, in concern with the international community. So, that is the uh, definition of J.J. Stark and that is the most appropriate one in the present scenario. So, in, when it comes to the definition of public international law, first it was coined by uh, Bentham in 1780s and then we have to know that uh, the first uh, authoritative definition came from Oppenheim who said that law of nations or international law is the name of body of customary and treaty rules which are consider, considered legally binding by civilized states in their intercourse with each other. The points to be noted here is body of customary and treaty rules, then it is considered to be legally binding and thus it is considered by civilized state and for what it is for the intercourse with each other. So, this was the most authoritative uh, definition that came uh, in the initial stage that is the Oppenheim's definition. The criticism to Oppenheim definition is that uh, it uh, not only states but also shall also include international organization as its subject. So, then came P. E. Corbett's definition. A P. E. Corbett uh, defined international law as such that is the future of international law is one with the future of international organizations. Individuals and other private persons have rights and duties in international law not only customary and conventional international law, but it also includes general principles of law. So, that was by P. E. Corbett. Then, the modern definition that is the present uh, scenario, the most appropriate definition for the present scenario is by J. Uh, G. Stark. And here, international law not only regulates the relations between states, but also deals with international organizations, individuals and non-state entities. So, that uh, was included in definition of J.G. Stark which we uh, discussed in detail and now we have to know why there is a change in these uh, definitions. So, the reasons for this emergence of new definitions are we can uh, generally cat, uh, point out three reasons mainly that is the first one will be establishment of a large number of permanent international institutions or organizations. The second one is for the protection of human rights and fundamental freedom. And the third one creation of new rules for punishment of persons committing international crime. So, this is based on uh, the latest one we have, we have uh, considered is J. G. Stark and with that definition we have, can coin these reasons. So, that is with the definition and now uh, there is uh, the nature of international law that is theories of the base of international law. There are some uh, group who says that international law is not a true law and there is another group who says that international law is a true law. So, people who propound that international law is not a true law is John Austin, Hobbes, Holland, Perfendery, Perfendoff and Bentham. Once again, John Austin, Hobbes, Holland, Puffendorf and Bentham, they propound that international law is not a true law. And the second view is that international law is a true law. That is uh, propounded by the na uh, natural school of law. So, looking forward into international law is not a true law, that is important essay question with respect to public international law and that will be dealt in a different section. It is not a big topic yet, but important for essay. So, thank you. We have discussed about the definitions of uh, uh, public international law in this session and we discussed who are the, uh, the two theories and who propounded the two theories. We have not discussed in detail about the theories that will be in the next session. And we have also looked into the reasons why the, uh, there, is, there was a necessity for the change in the definition. So, uh, what we discussed is Oppenheim, then definition by Oppenheim, its criticism, then P. E. Corbett 
and then the present scenario j uh, j j j stark and then we discussed about a uh, q inverses uh, a case law so that will be with uh, definitions of uh, public international law so thank you for listening i hope it helps and have a nice day